good people don't smoke marijuana. I've known Larry for a long time. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. <laughs> the medical marijuana. The medical marijuana. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Medical Marijuana Radio. This one is for Saturday, the 11th of August, 2018. I'm your host, Larry Love. We're here every week to bring you the latest information for the uh, fight to use medical cannabis uh, and the fight to uh, use adult cannabis as well. And uh, info comes from all over the world. And uh, today's guest, a very important story, uh, Tisha Brick, uh, has a 10-year-old son here in New Mexico that is fighting to use uh, his medicine uh, in school. And it's a fight that's gone on in other places uh, and has been won. And, and Tisha is out there uh, fighting for the life of her son and for the life of others. And we'll be talking with her in the second part of the show. But uh, first, uh, as always, uh, I've got news for you. And um, taking a look at uh, this same battle uh, over in... Um, Hang on, sorry. Uh, in Illinois, well, first, before before that, Jeff Sessions says that he's surprised Americans aren't embracing his anti-marijuana stance. Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, on Tuesday said he's surprised Americans aren't overwhelmingly embracing his widely reported stance against marijuana. All the while, recent polling reveals a majority of voters uh, do, in fact, support legal pot. Mr. Sessions briefly weighed in on marijuana legalization during a wide-ranging discussion held Tuesday at Luke Air Force Base near Phoenix, uh, AZ Central. Uh, when they nominated me for attorney general, you would have thought the biggest issue in America was when I said, I don't think America is going to be a better place if they sell marijuana in every corner grocery store, Mr. Sessions told attendees. People didn't like that. I'm surprised that they didn't like that, he said. Indeed, 57% of Americans favor legalizing marijuana, according to uh, results of a government-sponsored poll. So uh, that's what he has to say. Um, and now, uh, we were talking about Tisha Brick and her son. Uh, the governor of Illinois, and I'm trying to uh, pull up that... Uh, uh, let me see if this is it here. Yes, Governor uh, Rayner, or Rauner, uh, okays allowing medical cannabis for students at school. This is a Republican governor of Illinois. Uh, Springfield, Illinois, Governor Bruce Rayner uh, has signed a law requiring public schools to allow parents to administer medical marijuana uh, at school to eligible children. The Republican took action Wednesday as it allows parents or guardians to administer a cannabis-infused product to a student on school property or school bus if both parent and child have been cleared by the state's medical marijuana law. The law does not authorize a school to prohibit dispensing the drug if administrators determine that it would create a disruption to the school's educational environment or would oppose other students to the product, expose other students to the product. So um, uh, there's a Republican governor in Illinois facing the same situation that uh, we're facing, facing here. And uh, I advise everybody to listen to uh, uh, Tisha Brick's interview today. And then uh, I think we all should start calling the governor's office uh, because uh, Tisha has a, a big hearing coming up on the 20th. And we should all call Governor Martinez and tell her to follow the suit with the Republican governor of Illinois and to help uh, sick children. Okay, that's, that's what I have to say about that. Um, anyway, uh, going forward, here is a Michigan 80-year-old medical marijuana patient with an expired card. They put her in jail overnight. These medical uh, uh, programs are supposed to help patients and keep them out of harm's way of, of le the legal situation. So uh, here is this report. 
An 80-year-old grandmother was jailed overnight in Clare County because she had a very, very small amount of pot at her home, but her medical marijuana card had expired. Fox 17's Dana Chicklis joins us in the studio with details, and the families pushed Dana to end the stigma surrounding marijuana. Right, Doug, we spoke with Dolores Saltzman and her son Mark, who say cannabis saved Dolores' life. It worked up an appetite for her when she was sick, helped her heal after multiple surgeries, and today she says it eases her pain from ongoing health conditions. So you can imagine how disturbed they are today after a deputy took this 80-year-old woman to jail for the first time in her life. After I smoke, I go down to a one. Pain-wise. What pain-wise. Before I smoke, I would say I'm an eight right now. This November, Dolores Saltzman turns 81. She lives with arthritis, diverticulitis, muscle and bone aches. But she says cannabis keeps her moving and making art. And this is the little paper I work with. Mm -hmm. It's called Quilly. And it saved my life because I had a bad bleed. But the medicine the doctor put you on, the opioids and all of that, what did that do to you? Sick to my stomach. June 13th, around 9 at night, Clare County Deputy Ashley Gruno knocked on Dolores' door, according to court records, to return Dolores' great-granddaughter's phone. That's when the deputy smelled marijuana. She came in and kind of frustrated. You remember how you were telling yes, me that she, she your anxiety went up oh, off the roof? Way up. And she asked who, whose it was, correct? Right, and I told her it was me. You can see the deputy seized several pipes, four joints, and one purple jar with an undisclosed amount of cannabis. How much marijuana did she take? About that much. Dolores but says the deputy searched her bedroom, took pictures, even helped her clean up. I got everything done but the one pan. And I says, you, are you ready, hon? Because she just standing there leaning after she put the bread and ketchup away, just leaning there. I said, are you ready, hon? Uh, let's go. Then Dolores was handcuffed in the patrol car, says she wasn't read her rights and escorted to jail for the night. That's ridiculous what they do pe to people. <laughs> they don't need to make you that cold. The old Arthur was screaming at me. She won't know who Arthur is. Arthritis. Dolores hopes sharing her story will help others. That's what I want people to do. Yeah. Don't be ashamed of it. Something that's going to help you feel better. Her son Mark says this deputy made a mistake. I just thought it was absolutely ridiculous to put her through this like that. They could have given her a ticket and to show us your card later. Fox 17 reached out to the Clare County prosecutor and sheriff about how this case was handled. Clare County prosecutor Michelle Ambrositis tells Fox 17 in part her office charged Dolores with misdemeanor marijuana possession because Dolores wasn't a medical marijuana card holder, though they encouraged her to renew her card. Then August 2nd, a judge signed this order dismissing Dolores's case. Sheriff John Wilson wrote Fox 17 what the person was doing was illegal. Had she renewed her medical marijuana card, she would have been fine. He says he agrees with the prosecutor in allowing Dolores to renew her card, then dismissing the case. Right. Dolores's renewed medical marijuana card is on its way, but she urges voters to legalize marijuana in November and end the stigma. I hope in that we all learn a lesson from this and, and we make amends and, and uh, people will get out and vote for it. We're the ones that have to stand up. We are the people and we just got to fight for our rights. So clearly a big vote coming up in November to legalize right. recreational marijuana, which is what Dolores was just talking about. Uh, and I did ask specifically the Clare County Sheriff, you know, why, do you feel it was appropriate for your deputy to not only ticket this grandmother, but to jail her overnight? He's yet to respond to that part of my inquiry. But again, you know, part of the reason that Dolores and her son Mark wanted to share this story is because they just, again, want to express how it's changed her life medically. And also their disgust in feeling the jailing wasn't necessary. Ticket, fix it, ticket, okay. But to really jail an 80-year-old person overnight for this, right. that's up for a debate. With enough health problems. That's not even up for debate. They shouldn't have done that. To, to do that to a woman of 80 years old in whatever health condition is just totally outrageous. These programs are supposed to uh, protect us uh, from law enforcement. We need to educate law enforcement 
Uh, and we need to help people with renewals. There shouldn't be one-year renewals. Uh, you know, elderly people, uh, they might forget to renew, and they get put in jeopardy. All right, uh, staying with the elderly, another, here's a great report. I believe this is out of New York. This is a uh, Hebrew home for the, the aged, and uh, this is how they are handling uh, medical cannabis. I've been using it for three weeks, almost four weeks, and the results are amazing. I never used marijuana before. I had three children that did. I tried to, you know, talk to them and whatnot, and they said, Ma, take it. You'll see how good you feel, you know, but I never did. Now I sit down and get up, and I don't feel anything. And the first time that happened, I got up and down three times. It was so exciting for me. That's a biggie. I approached our chief medical officer, Dr. Pallas, and our vice president for nursing, uh, Mochi Rutigliano, to get their support for introducing medical cannabis as a beneficial therapeutic intervention for residents here at the Hebrew home. I started to become more familiar with the history of medical cannabis uh, and how effective it's been for the last 4,000 years, specifically at targeting pain complaints, uh, spasticity, stiffness, uh, seizures, Parkinson's disease, and these are all issues that are so common in geriatric medicine and so common in the nursing home. Everyone at the table laughs when I take my pills, when I put them out. It's like 20 pills and a lot of them are pain, most of them are pain pills, and now Dr. Pallas is slowly reducing them. And the, I count them every day, and when I see one less, I'm so thrilled, because it's like I, I just felt, at this age, I'm so dependent on pills. I hated it. Yeah, she hated it. You know, you should see the pills that the elderly have to take, and most of them are probably unnecessary and causing other problems, and don't work well with each other. Uh, this was amazing to watch. It was from a, uh, a spot called Now This. You can go to uh, Google Now This. They, they make a really lot of wonderful uh, uh, cannabis and, and other related uh, uh, spots and, and interviews and so forth. Okay, next up, uh, after visiting uh, Colorado, an Indiana lawmaker says medical marijuana is right for his state. Here is this. Yeah. And now to the story about an Indiana lawmaker that has done something that would have gotten him arrested had he done it in Indiana. But instead, he was further west in Colorado. Our Mary Mills joins us tonight in studio to help explain what this Republican lawmaker did and why he's really not afraid to talk about it. Mary? Hey, Scott, we're talking about Jim Lucas, a three-term representative from Seymour. He's become a big advocate of medical marijuana. In fact, last fall, we followed him to Illinois where he toured a grow center and dispensary to see how it works. Well, last week he spent five days doing the same in Colorado. That's a state where medical cannabis is legal for both medical and recreational use. So I had to ask. Did you try it? Sure. You know, I enjoyed the freedoms that Colorado offers, you know, to responsible adults. And it was, uh, it was amazing. Jim Lucas didn't flinch. As photos from his trip show, he visited grow centers and dispensaries like this one for recreational users. You have to be 21 or older. They card everybody. And I mean, they're very strict on that, which was nice to see the level of control that they have. As for what he tried? Cookies, edibles, um, smoked, vape sticks. So you're a state lawmaker and you just told me something that could get you arrested had you done it here in Indiana. Are you worried about any repercussions? You know what? We're to that point. Somebody has to take the lead on this. And your driver's license. Yeah, sure. Marijuana for medical use is now legal in 30 states. That's what Lucas is most adamant about. It's not a, a, a wonder drug for everybody, but I think it's unconscionable that we do not have this in our toolbox to let patients and doctors, you know, choose what what form of treatment is, is best for them. Last session, Lucas introduced a bill calling for medical marijuana. It got people talking, but never went anywhere. So if you're reelected, you will continue pushing for oh, even more, yes. legalization of medical. What about recreation? Absolutely. I'm Both? thinking about developing legislation this year. He says of his trip. It removed all doubt in my mind that this is the right thing to do for Indiana. Why is that? 
Well, it saves lives. As a small business owner, Lucas didn't have to worry about a drug test upon his return home. Did you bring any back? Oh, no, that, that's illegal. That would be illegal. And, and again, I want to do this um, as professionally as possible. I want to be honest with myself and with everybody else. But uh, until we can get it, you know, brought here in Indiana, we, we have to, uh, we have, we have to but obey Indiana laws. Pretty unusual to hear a politician talk so openly about trying marijuana. He's up for re-election. Is he concerned at all how this may impact him politically? You know, he said there's always a concern, but he did win his primary easily. That district leans Republican. He's also known to be very outspoken. And this is an issue that he uh, has really, you know, become engaged in. Mm -hmm. And views are changing, so he's thinking not. Yeah, interesting story, Mary. Thanks. So, uh, yes, uh, new states are going to be legalizing uh, this uh, November, and uh, it's, it's getting quite exciting, actually. Um, all right, here, listen, we, we have some uh, legislators uh, who are trying to uh, protect veterans and uh, federal workers who use medical cannabis, and we need this protection. Florida, if the proper doctor writes you a prescription, you can vape or use cannabis oils to treat a variety of medical conditions. The people who support medical marijuana who sit in this room say it is a much healthier alternative than opioids and benzos. However, in Florida and most states, even with a prescription, someone can be fired or denied employment if cannabis comes up on a drug screen. I could be fired tomorrow from my employer for choosing to use cannabis legally. That's why Congressman Charlie Crist, a Democrat, is sitting at this table. He's joined a Republican representative from Georgia to sponsor a bill, though late in the session, that would protect federal workers that are prescribed marijuana from losing their job and also expands treatment options for military veterans. This would make it a nationwide uh, opportunity for veterans and other federal workers. Congressman Chris Bill only applies to federal employees. This attorney represents someone who has a valid prescription but was still denied a job in the private sector. But the guy was promised a job, said don't worry about it, you use medical marijuana, that's okay with the company. Then when he moved down, quit his old job and went to get the job and start working, they told him they couldn't accept him because of his medical marijuana use. Chris says he hopes this bill will open the door for future legislation protecting private sector workers as well. Definitely can do that, and, and I think it's a first great step. In Pinellas County, Dan Maddox, Fox 13 News. Okay, so again, fighting for the, uh, the right to use our medicine. That's what it's all about. Um, in Philadelphia, the district attorney's office no longer is pursuing charges against marijuana users. Here is this report. This is the way to go is to decriminalize. Uh, fantastic, Philly. Now to a story NBC10 was first to report a new policy on pot. Philadelphia's district attorney says his office will no longer prosecute people for having small amounts of marijuana. NBC10's Brandon Hudson is gauging the reaction to this change. He joins us live at City Hall. Brandon. Well, Jacqueline, several people who support the idea said this allows police to get more serious offenders off of our streets and out of our neighborhoods. On a nice summer evening at Love Park, we met people who love the district attorney's latest decision on pot. No charges for anyone buying small amounts. That's defined as 30 grams or less in an internal memo obtained exclusively today by NBC10. I think it's a good thing. It um, definitely keep a lot of people out of jail for just walking around with a little bit of marijuana in their pockets. So you start. Melissa start. Bishop believes pot can be a powerful ally. I fought cancer twice and marijuana has been a huge success when it comes for cancer patients and survivors. She's not alone in thinking the green is good. Philly's mayor agrees. He spoke about legalization last month. New Jersey does it before us. You're going to have a wave of people going over to New Jersey and to Delaware. Uh, why as well keep our people here and, uh, and, get, and gain some revenue for good uses? Since January, prosecutors have declined to file charges in nearly 300 cases involving small amounts of weed. Krasner said 90% of those charged only receive citations. I know the less people in jail, the better for everybody. I mean, it's better for the families, the parents, their kids. I mean, it's a win for everybody. A spokesman for the district attorney's office said this follows up on a campaign promise to eliminate jail overcrowding. 
Live in Center City, I'm Brandon Hudson, NBC 10. So this really is the wave of the future. Cities are decriminalizing. Albuquerque, I believe, has done it, and Santa Fe, and uh, many cities around the country that uh, uh, are starting to do this on their own, which is, is great. It keeps people out of the system, and the system is horrible. Um, but what we need is more mainstream education, uh, and it's starting to hit the mainstream. Obviously, CBD is a really big deal. Uh, you know, uh, Sanjay Gupta with his CNN specials, uh, you know, prol- proliferated that. Uh, but now you know, here's an NBC, t- the Today Show, uh, did a nice little piece on uh, CBD oil on the rise. And uh, here is this report from the Today Show. We need exposure like this to educate and get this thing going. Here we go. People are buzzing about this, whether you're shopping in stores or online. It's common to come across a product containing CBD. So what is it? CBD is short for cannabidiol. It's one of the active ingredients in marijuana. But unlike its cannabis counterpart, THC, CBD does not cause a high. It is said to relieve pain, stabilize moods, and promote calmness. You can find it in everything from shampoo, mascara, lip balm, and bath bombs to coffee, chocolate, candy, and gummies. We have a few of the products in studio with us this morning just to give you an idea the latest brand to join the cbd craze look at this is heineken with a brew called hi-fi hops instead of alcohol one version of the cannabis infused drink contains a mix of both thc and cbd as of now it can be only be found in california where thc is legal cbd will soon go beyond beauty products and brews though in june the fda approved the first CBD prescription medication to treat epilepsy. It's expected to hit pharmacy shelves this fall. Social media users are sharing their experiences with CBD. Jace writes, I've said it before and I'll say it again. CBD oil is a lifesaver if you're someone who deals with chronic pain. I use it every day and it makes a world of difference. Now, the legality of CBD is complex and varies state by state, but it remains largely unregulated. Right now, you can order CBD products online and have them shipped anywhere in the country guys all right thank you chanel for more we are joined by dr roshni raj a today contributor associate professor at nyu langone health dr raj good morning we have all the products in front of us we just want to dig deeper on this one so first question if you use this stuff do you get like the high that you would get from from pot or cannabis she's asking for a friend (laughs) i don't want to know of course it is an important distinction so cbd pure cbd does not have any of the psychoactive effects that people who smoke marijuana may get that's the thc that ingredient is the one that causes the high so it just has cbd no you should not get any sort of high or any mental changes but cbd does have some therapeutic properties and it has been shown in some studies to be promising for things like epilepsy even things like anxiety depression has anti-inflammatory effects antioxidant effects so there is a lot of potential here but we do really need to do some better well-conducted studies on it what are the you mentioned some of the benefits what are some of the cons are there cons well i think there are now with any substance some people may have some side effects they're relatively Mm -hmm. few with cbd but some people may experience some nausea or kind of gi upset the one thing i think is because this is still considered a schedule one drug by the dea Mm -hmm. that means an illegal substance that has no medicinal properties it's very difficult to conduct research Mm -hmm. people are doing it but there are a lot of restrictions on it so the other thing is it's not very well regulated if you get a product with cbd are you sure of the dose are you sure of exactly what's in it that's i think where there's some room to grow here but i definitely think this is something we're going to be seeing a lot more of this is i may be a legal question not a medical one, yeah. so I don't mean to put you on the spot, but can you get it anywhere, or is it only in states where marijuana is legal? Right now, you know, legally, you can only get it in sort of dispensaries or states where you're mm-hmm. able to buy that. But that being said, you are going to see it probably on shelves, and it's not very much enforced in terms of the legality mm-hmm. of buying things like lotions or gummies, things like that. But you should be aware that technically, if it's not legal to sell marijuana in those states, it's yeah. not legal to purchase it. Okay. All, right. All right, Dr. Raj, thank you. You want to come <laughs> Again, that's the uh, Today Show. All right, we're going to take a little break. We'll be right back with a very important story. It's important to a lot of people in a lot of states. Uh, We'll be right back with uh, Tisha Brick, and we'll be talking about uh, the fight for using medical cannabis when you're in a program for a child to be administered in school. We'll be right back after this. The Medical Marijuana the 
Hi, this is Grace from Organtica. You're listening to Medical Marijuana Radio. And we're back. And uh, back for a second appearance is Tisha Brick. Uh, Tisha has a uh, child in the Albuquerque school system uh, who is, f- they're fighting for the right to uh, take his cannabis medicine uh, at school. And it's been uh, quite a uh, situation. So um, welcome, Tisha. And uh, give us a little background of, of how this got started and, and what it's come to today. Sure. Thank you uh, for having me on your show. I appreciate it again for a second time. Um, so um, at, what started this was, um, you know, back in fall of last year um, with the Estancia Municipal School District, um, we had uh, a change in administration and um, therefore a change in a lot of um, the policies that were being implemented around the school. And among them um, would be the fact that my son was being allowed to be administered medical cannabis um, so obviously a story just came out this morning in the Albuquerque Journal about it, really in detail, um, talking about how at one point um, it was being allowed to be administered and the, the, um, the school actually wrote um, a positive note on it saying that this was critical to Anthony's function and being able to stay in school, which I agree with. This is what I've been um, talking about in media all along. And then this year, you know, this new administration decided they were going to not only start prohibiting Anthony's um, medical cannabis, but they also decided to start criminalizing both of us, um, threatening Anthony with assault charges and trying to um, reduce his services and his school day, um, putting the burden of dealing with him strictly on me, um, proposing to do some really harmful and degrading things to him in order to deal with him in school, um, which I wasn't standing for. You know, I was standing up for him and advocating for him, and as I did, Um, things became very heated and hostile between the school and myself and they continued to resist and insist that they um, you know there was just no way around it and so you know I had to pull him out of school in November um, as I would mentioned before and um, he couldn't go to school because uh, for one thing they were criminalizing him and and me and for two um, then they couldn't they wouldn't allow his medicine so there you know to me that was not a, a suitable situation for him right um, um, so let me let me just slow you down for a second and ask um, how old is is Anthony and what is his condition okay so Anthony is 10 years old um, and his conditions um, are um, undifferentiated schizophrenia uh, PTSD uh, ADHD the combined type sensory integration disorder and developmental delay and what kind of medicine is he taking and how is it administered uh, you know currently so he's been on um, medical cannabis products um, since 2015 and primarily what he uses on a daily basis um, is the whole plant oil extract which is dosed out um, and individually batched into capsules carefully dosed um, we worked with doctors to do this, um, and he uses both CBD and THC products. And in school, um, during his behavioral crises that we've talked about, he was being administered THC. That was the one that got him to be able to, to calm down and go back to function. So um, it, it had been, it's been working for him, obviously. So the... the, the, the situation is i guess that during the school day i guess a dose that he takes before he gets to school sort of wears off how often does he have to uh take a dose in order to maintain uh you know a a a steady uh you know uh, condition so to speak or attitude i'm not sure how to ask that question well yeah and I, i i get what you're saying and i know that's a question that a lot of users want to know you know a lot of people have asked you know, how come you just can't give him this medicine at home or whatever? And what people need to understand is that although Anthony takes this medicine um, on a daily basis, he takes more of the CBD um, than he does the THC during the day. You know, the THC, um, it's a one-to-one ratio, obviously. That, that's been researched to be, um, you know, as a balanced uh, part of this medicine regime for a lot of people. Right. Um, so he, it's not necessarily that it would wear off. It's that his particular condition... Um, like many other um, neurological, um, mental ill, mental illness conditions, 
um, often have times where they are triggered or they have, you know, what's considered a crisis or a meltdown. And so the, the, what was being done in school was considered a rescue medicine. It was not something that was being done consistently and shouldn't be done consistently. Does that, does that make sense? Oh, no, yes, absolutely. It does make sense. And I'm just wondering, you know, the, um, capsules, of course, um, you know, it takes a little bit of time to, to, for a capsule to take effect. So yeah. have you tried like any uh, uh, sprays that are now around that sort of uh, get into the system a little bit quicker as a rescue or have, we, have you not found that yet? Um, yes, sir. actually those were among the first things that we tried before we got to whole plant oil. We went through um, all of, the, um, all of the, the popular line of products such as edibles, sprays, topicals, those sorts of things, and they didn't appear to have um, an, the effect that we desired for Anthony during during those moments or even during his um, routine medication taking. Um, we found that the whole plant oil, although it takes about 15 minutes um, for it to kick in, that was the one that had the strongest effect, the best effect, and the longest lasting effect. Uh huh. And so, um, it, it's not something that necessarily has to happen every day at school. It sort of it comes up uh, as maybe an episode might happen. So uh, yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. But my, I guess my question now is, you, you sort of said that the uh, school is acting uh, as a lawmaker. They're they they can't criminalize you. They're not in the lawmaking and, and arresting business. So uh, I'm not understanding how it's affecting how they are able to say, you know, that you could be arrested for this and so forth. Can you explain that to me, please? Yes, and so um, I, I don't think it's necessarily that they're proclaiming that they can arrest me. When I say they're criminalizing me, they were criminalizing me in their accusations of how they feel about me around them. They've criminalized me in the sense that they've reported me to CYFD, they've accused me of uh, threatening their, their administrators and their staff. Um, they've accused me of being hostile and uncooperative, but they've claimed for themselves that, that they would lose their federal funding if they allowed me to administer this medicine on campus because the state law, um, they seem to be under the impression that the state law says that, you know, caregivers cannot administer this medicine on school grounds or within 300 feet of it even. Uh -huh. And so that's where it's gone with that legally. So, so what, what was the article about today, and, and what, what is coming up in order to uh, try to rectify the situation? Um, yes, so the article that came out today in the Albuquerque Journal um, goes into a little bit more of detailed story about, you know, what's go really going on, because, you know, we first were featured on the news just briefly about, you know, the beginning of this with the cannabis issue, and I wanted to be able to start coming out and really talking about the whole story, um, especially with the school coming out um, like they did in this article. The superintendent came out. Um, and actually portrayed himself as pro-cannabis. Um, but I think that when people come attend this hearing, they will, as he best said it, find out uh, the rest of the story, because there's more to the story than it appears to be. So this article talks about, um, you know, what I'm doing um, to try to change this. I've filed a due process hearing um, against uh, Estancia Municipal School District, which begins in August 20th and runs every day, all day through the 25th, and um, it is open to the public, although nobody can come record, um, people can still come watch, and this article talks about where we were with Anthony. Um, it gives evidence as to how the school was actually allowing it at one point, people who signed off on a letter about it, and then it talks about, you know, what I've just told you, how new administration came in um, and, and had a completely different change in attitude and heart and worked against Anthony and I instead of working with us, and they continue to do so um, as we speak, as of this day. Um, they are pretty hostile and defensive and guarded and seem to spin a story that they're just an innocent school district who's done nothing wrong. When is this hearing, and, and, and do you want people to come and show support? I do, and this hearing is August, it starts August 20th, and it's a six-day hearing, every day, all day. I need my community's support because I know that there are 
um, probably other parents and other patients who are going through similar stuff, maybe not this heavy, but uh, similar stuff, and I need my community's help because um, this is a fight that I'm taking on for the whole state. It's not just us. Right, and, and you're representing yourself. Um, uh, yes. In the in the have you had any hearings in the this is is this this is not a court hearing though this is like some kind of a a school board thing uh, who's running this, this hearing? This is an administrative hearing, um, and it's being presented in a court like format. Um, so it is legal; it's very legal, and it can go over and probably will go over to civil court because of the complex issues that that reside within this case. Um, it's being conducted by a state appointed hearing officer um, that that uh, the state and the Department of Education sets forth um, and it's being um, you know docketed and so if, if neither party can come through with a reasonable remedy to to um, you know resolve the situation for Anthony then then it would go over to civil court and we'd have to probably go in front of a judge and see if a judge can um, can remedy it better, which I think that it's yeah. very well going to go into that, considering what's at hand here. Uh, how, how can they project ahead of time that they think it's going to take six days all day long? I don't understand that. Can you explain that one to me? Yes, um, it's not projected. It is. It, it is because um, the reason for that is because um, there are so many witnesses and people that are involved in this situation and the way that these hearings are set up is that again it's just like court you have um you have the the two attorneys which is me and the school's attorney at this point and each side um will bring in each witness and present them with questions and present evidence to back up your case and you know what i mean it's just like i said it's literally just like court right so, so that's why it's going to take six days so uh, i mean your, your story is not new to our area here and it's not new to other states as well actually so uh has any has an, an attorney a local attorney uh reached out to you to to give you some help with this like pro bono or something have you, no, have, have, no, we haven't. In fact, everybody that we have reached out to for legal help has um, either said they couldn't or wouldn't take this case. Um, you know, and most of it being couldn't take the case because it's so large. Um, there's so much evidence. There's so many people involved, and it's got so many complicated issues that even attorneys are having a hard time, um, especially with the medical cannabis portion of it. Nobody's sure how to how to proceed with this because they they're you know there's they're, they're blocked by the normal proceedings of the law and they you know they they're not sure how to go about this other than you know just hey you, you know you as mom you're probably going to have to you're the best one to take the case on and you're the best one um to go and present this and you're most likely going to have to go and take it in front of a judge you know um because lawmakers won't help us we've tried reaching out to pretty much every lawmaker in the state and we've been promised that they would step in and help um, Grisham has repeatedly promised on email and on phone calls to me that she was going to help me, and she has yet to do so. I mean, in fact, they all keep uh, kind of saying, yeah, we're just kind of too busy. We have, you know, uh, legislative issues to deal with. <laughs> wow. Well, so other states have had the same problem, and mothers and, and, and children in other states have had the same problem. So uh, how has it been worked out there? I think Illinois is one of them, and... Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not sure about Colorado. I think they are maybe the first one. So how have they worked that out, uh, that situation, and what would the best-case scenario be for your situation to be worked out? So, yeah, so, I mean, I've been doing some research. Obviously, a lot of people have been researching and hearing about these states on the news, and these states um, have, have miraculously somehow managed to rally around those children and those parents, and those lawmakers have stepped up and said, you know what, you're right, um, this, the, you know, a lot of the, the claims by these parents being made is similar to mine, where they say that it violates um, the special education law, which is considered IDEA, the Individual with Disabilities Educational Act. It violates the Americans with Disabilities Act, and it goes against the state laws for the medical marijuana programs, because the Lynn and Aaron Compassionate Act was supposed to be put in place to protect patients and caregivers from this sort of thing from happening. So these states have had to 
um, get back involved rather quickly. They don't. They didn't sit around and wait for their legislation to come around. They actually took immediate action and said, no, no, you know, we don't want the children to be um, negatively impacted like that. The schools didn't retaliate against the parents. They sat down and worked with lawmakers and the parents and got those kids back in school and changed the law. And that's what needs to happen here. Well, so so you mentioned that it's part of the Lynn and Aaron Compassionate Use Act, which is our medical cannabis program here, to protect patients. Uh, and, yes. and children uh, are allowed to be patients, obviously. So uh, yes. so I'm going to ask a really stupid question. Uh, have, you, have you reached out to the attorney at the medical cannabis program to see if they can assist you in any way? Yes, and I haven't heard a response yet. I've even reached out to the Department of Health and the Department of Education um, and both of those programs are saying that it's not their responsibility, literally. Well, I mean, they're, they're, it's, their, it's their responsibility to enact the act, you know, and, and abide by the Lynn and Aaron Compassionate Use Act. So, uh, yeah. you know, I would think you could have a lawsuit against them for not protecting and doing what they promised to do for their patients. Uh, I would agree. I think I do, and I'm I'm working on it. That again, I have to unfortunately get through this particular. They, they, they the system is set up against the parents. You know, they they make you go through these terrible proceedings like a due process hearing, which is really ineffective for you and your child in, in the in the situation. And so, in order to get to a civil court, a district court, you know, you have to go through this. Um, and and you know what I mean. It's it's kind of terrible but that's the way it has to go and so we are planning on going all the way with this as far as I can but I wish that we didn't have to I wish that um, you know that everybody would do like these other states are doing and and stop the hostility and the retaliation and step in and just and 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 do what they're supposed to do like you said and act the law that they set forth you know we said as a state that we were going to put this um, medical cannabis program in place and and it was supposed to be good and here we have people like us that that it's no good to us you know what i mean it does us no good to have a card right now because it's not honored not in schools hospitals you know places that we we need it the most right well you know what you're, you're a pioneer um as a mother using cannabis for their child and uh, as pioneers, you you have to fight. And you know, and I consider myself an advocate. I've been advocating for this plant for many many years. And uh, uh, you know, I, I'll I don't know if I can reach out to anybody, but between now and the twentieth, I mean, we, there is like another week or so that you have. Uh, yeah. You know, if there's an attorney out there that uh, uh, feels compassionate enough for our compassionate use act here, reach out to uh, Tisha Brick. Uh, how can people get a hold of you? Um, so I'm, I'm obviously, you can always message me on Facebook, um, and there's, um, I, I'll go ahead and, and just, you know, if they want, they could reach out to you. If they have your contact, they can get Absolutely. in touch with um, uh, Jason Barker from the um, LECUA Patients Coalition. Um, there's there's many ways to reach out to me. You know, there, I'm, I'm pretty easily found. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to say uh, before we go? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. So the hearing, you know, I told you I had made it public, and um, the hearing officer just recently announced that he was going to ban um, all recording devices uh, altogether, which would be cameras, audio, anything, um, which I thought was um, pretty unconstitutional and defeats the purpose of having a public hearing. Um, and also the fact that, you know, we're not allowed to have um, experts um, that aren't tied into my son's case directly, such as um, Brian Crum, who I recently wanted to reach out to because, um, as everybody knows, he wrote the he wrote some of the aspects of the Lynn and Aaron Compassionate Act, and I thought he would be highly relevant and credible, especially as a nurse practitioner when it comes to mental health issues with children and cannabis use. But um, that wasn't allowed either. He's probably um, then, the he's probably the best expert in the state on this whole subject, and and yeah. and the hearing officer is disallowing this, which is, which is just egregious, and and you're you're not really being able to present, uh, your your case in the best possible light. It sounds like to me. That's correct. Uh, you know the IDEA um, due process hearings. They they have these really strict rules that kind of they say that you have due process, but you don't because they're only allowing in. Um, sort of biased evidence at this point, um, which is what I was talking about. You have to almost get through it to go to another side to get the whole story out and to be able to get relevant experts and everything in to testify. It's just, to me, a waste, you know. And then you have 
um, dirty tactics being done on the outside, such as um, like right now, my son's uh, pediatric neurologist, who's going to be a witness um, to this case and be testifying in this case, um, literally had the DEA called on him just recently by by the school, I think either the school or the school's attorney, if I'm not mistaken. I just got a phone call from him and his attorney about that. So um, that's another sort of thing that shouldn't be going on right now, and it just shows the overall um, atmosphere of how, how these proceedings are set up against, um, you know, the people that are trying to advocate. Well, it just it just sounds like the um, current administration here uh, in, in New Mexico, which has been against our program for the last uh, almost eight years, is just going to continue uh, railing against the patients just because it fits their party's agenda, and that's hurting people. And uh, it's just it's it's really not right. And uh, uh, I hope that there's some kind of, I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's going to be, I'm going to try to come down one of those days. You'll let me know yeah. when. Uh, but yeah. uh, it's just uh, its just crazy that they're, they're hurting p- sick people and, and causing them more problems uh, by taking the, the attitude against science and against the law. We have a law in this state, which is the Linen uh, Aaron Compassionate Use Act, which allows not only children, but uh, you know, adults to use this as medicine, and it's legal in this state. So, for for the school to call the DEA uh, on uh, on, uh, I'm not sure who you said they were calling My them. My son's pediatric neurologist. Yeah, the neurologist. I mean, prescribing physician for medical yeah. cannabis. Right. Well, we're, they're recommending physicians, not prescribing. Yeah. That's, well, that's, no, I yeah, know, but yeah, that's, yeah, the recommending yeah. physician that was wow. the, you know the person on record of going, yeah, sure. you know, Anthony needs cannabis. Well, actually, you know, these are people that are crucial to your case and that are involved with this. But uh, uh, you're, you're in a terrible situation, but you're working hard to fix it. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I also just want to let people know that again, we, I, whatever support we get out of this, my son and I appreciate. And it does not end with this hearing, even though I know you just mentioned that there's a short period of time. This is not going to end with this hearing. This is going to be probably a bit of a lengthy battle. So I hope that that our our support grows, and I'm open to anybody else that is willing to step up and join me in fighting for this change and fighting um, against retaliation and discrimination, period. And that's exactly what it is. Uh, thank you, Tisha Brick, for being so strong, and, and stay strong for uh, your child and, and obviously the child, children of other people as well you're fighting for. You're fighting for everybody. So uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, thank you. good luck, and we'll be right back after this. The medical marijuana. The medical marijuana. Well, I want to thank uh, Tisha Brick. Uh, please try to support her. I'm going to recommend that we all try calling Governor Martinez's office this week and asking her to make the same decision that uh, a Republican governor did just uh, this week uh, or recently in uh, Illinois. Let's ask her to call the governor of Illinois and ask for some help so that uh, the governor can make the right decision. Um, thank you, Tisha Brick, for fighting. I also want to thank my two radio mentors, both with the initials HS. Thank you for your inspiration. Uh, if you'd like to be a uh, guest on the show, if you have a story to tell, a product to sell, if you're an advocate and activist, it's info at mmjradio.com. Again, info at mmjradio.com. If you'd like to hear our uh, old shows that you may have missed, you can go to medicalmarijuanaradio.com. My YouTube channel is LSLove88. On SoundCloud and Spreaker, we're MMJ Radio. Uh, we have a channel on CannabisTube.net. Also on Spreaker and iHeartRadio, we're on the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. On NowTV.com, channel 937. And coming very soon, I hope, the CannaChannel.com. Shalom. Shalom. Papu boy get a hustle, get a boy. Papu daddy, papu 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 papu. Hey.